Welcome back people, my name is Claire. Today we're talking about fabrics and how to order them online. If you're not someone who's always ordered online, this unprecedented time, oh my God, I'm one of those people. Yes, this unprecedented time, it can be a really scary prospect. And we've got garments to sew people, so we need to know what to buy, how to buy it, and when to buy it basically. So today I'm going to go through all the deets and we are going to go shopping with confidence. So are you in? Because I know I am. I started filming this and there was no personality in it whatsoever so I'm putting some personality in it. Let's do this shall we? Let's talk about the elephant in the room. This looks very different to my usual setup, I know. I am in the middle of a renovation and I will bring you a room tour once it's done. Let's forget all about that. Let's get on with the video that you came here to watch, shall we? So, buying fabrics online. Super, super daunting, I know. When I was shopping for my capsule wardrobe, I was spent an age shopping all over the show and I'm someone who's always shopped online so I dread to think how someone who is new to this business would understand. So I really want to break it down for you today and help you to understand that it's really not as daunting or bad as it seems and you can go and buy all the fabrics and know that what you're buying is what you're buying. So the first thing is I want you to understand the basics of fabric and by that I mean you've got to understand what you're buying. So fabrics basically come in two types. You've either got a woven or you've got a stretch which is usually a knit or a jersey. A woven is into we think of a weaving board and how the fabric goes in and out, in and out. That's exactly how woven fabric is put together. Whereas stretchy or knit fabric is just like the knitting on your knitting needles. So think of how your knitting grows. It's exactly the same for stretch fabrics. So once you understand that there's just woven and stretchy fabrics, you need to understand the composition. The composition is what it's made up of. You've got your naturals, you've got your synthetics and you've got your hybrids. So naturals is like your linens and your cottons. Synthetics is like your polys and there's loads and loads of, you get basically poly everything. And then your hybrids are fabrics such as viscose, which is coming from a natural source, but it goes through lots of processes. And so it's kind of synthetic in that way. And then once you understand that, you can understand the properties that each type of fabric brings. The properties are how it behaves. So certain fabrics will have drape, but others will not. Some will be breathable, some will be movable, some will be versatile. There's lots and lots of ways in which a fabric will differ. And what you want from your garment will determine what type of fabric that you go to. So my second point for you is to research what you don't know. You can get a wealth of information from videos such as this, but we can only pack so much information into each video before you all fall to sleep. So it's important, it's imperative, I would say, that you go and do your own research. Google's there for a reason. You can type in anything and find out about anything what a wonderful world we live in. But the point is, you can find out all the information you need. You could look up information about specific types of fabrics. So you could look up about wool. You could look about knits. You could look about linen, which I've got under here, which you can't see. <laughs> you can also Google bloggers, look for reviews of people who have used specific fabrics that you want to use or patterns that you want to make. Fold line is a really good resource for this because people put pictures up. Also, a patternreview.com is another one, although I'm not too hot on the website. It looks like it's from the 1990s, but the information is really, really good. I'm over there, so look me up, Penguin and Pear. You can see some of the makes that I've made. 
these days a lot of the fabric shops actually have bloggers attached to their shops and they give them fabric and ask them to make it up in exchange for a review read those reviews you have to go into those reviews with a certain mind that they have been given free fabric and they are making a review based on that so they're always going to be positive reviews but there is a wealth of information on that minerva.com have just updated their website and they've now got more of a like facebook type situation i've posted over there myself i just posted one about my um adrian top just the other day i know lamazzi fabrics have their own bloggers i think so is faction probably do youtube is exploding with sewing vloggers these days and they're all reviewing the makes that they make so check those videos out Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles is the queen, the queen of pattern reviews. So do check her out because she really knows what she's talking about, as do many others. So there are lots and lots, too many to name. I did do a video quite a long time ago now on some new up and coming vloggers. Some of them might not be around still, but I know many of them are. So I will link that video you know in that little space down there also another great way to find out information to research what you need to know is to go and look at the product description of fabrics that you want to buy you could also speak in sewing groups on facebook if you're on facebook if you post in sewing groups then they the people in those groups are so so helpful and there is a wealth of information if you can hear cars going by please ignore them there's not a lot i can do i live on the main road so the third point i want to share with you is you need to know what you want to buy sounds obvious i know it sounds really really obvious actually at the beginning of january i did a video about this where i talked about it being time that we ask ourselves some real honest questions and that video was a huge hit with you guys. You loved it. So I will link that down below if you happen to miss it. I don't know where you are, but you might have missed it and you might want to watch it. So you need to ask yourself lots of questions. But specifically for what we're talking about here now, you need to ask yourself, are you buying it for your stash or for a specific pattern that you want to make now? If it's for your stash, how much do you generally need to buy to make a garment and when you're purchasing a certain type of fabric so say a wool i'm not going to buy wool to make a t-shirt am i well i might but that'd be a really really bad decision if i was going to buy wool to make a coat which is what i was going to make i'd be asking myself do i want to make a cropped coat or do i want to make a longer coat how much fabric is that likely to take and those decisions are things you need to think about when you're buying fabric if it's for a pattern then you must you must you must must read what the pattern tells you to buy it will give you a range of fabrics to choose from it will give you a layout plan it'll tell you how much you need and it'll tell you how much stretch you need if it's a stretchy garment you need to ask yourself do you want to buy cheap and cheerful or do you want to buy quality that will determine where you shop do you want patterned or plain do you want pastels or do you want bold knowing all this stuff before you go shopping will help expedite the time it takes to buy your purchases and will reduce the chances of you making a mistake so do think about those things and do write them down have you got a pen and paper are you writing this down i hope so so now we get on to number four and it's buying the fabric yahoo we got there eventually this is the fun bit i feel you i know you see a fabric online and you just got a bit there and then i know how you feel how do you think this fabric came into my life i understand that need that rush that feeling of complete wowness when you've just ordered your new fabrics but i want you to hold back on doing that don't do that if you see a fabric like that that you've just got to have give it a little while and then go back the next day or a couple of days later if you still want it then yeah fair enough 
do not buy on a whim because I bought this nearly two years ago. I'm too scared to use it. When you're buying fabrics, have a look on lots of different sites. This can be time consuming at first, but you will get to know what's out there. You'll see the prices. You'll see, um, you'll see many different shops selling the same fabric and they'll give slightly different information. So actually you can get more and more information about what you're looking for. It's going to give you a good idea of what is available. Nothing more disheartening than purchasing a fabric for £15 a metre and then seeing it for £7 on another site afterwards. Yeah, I know. I've been there. Computer work. Why not you working, computer? Just checking it's still recording. Oh, imagine that. Recording all this and then it not recording. Oh, so you need to be looking at the info. When we find a fabric that we absolutely love, what do we do? We go and look at the pictures and make a decision based on those pictures. But no, no, no. I'm telling you not to do that. Go and look. Look at the pictures by all means because that gives you a wealth of information. But also make sure you're looking at that description box. I know I've said that a few times in this video now, but honestly, Honestly, there is so much information in that box that you need to be reading it. For example, a little while ago, I needed to purchase some denim, but it needed 20% stretch, 5% elastane. If I'd just gone and looked for denim with the photos, all denim looks much the same, doesn't it? So I'd have picked up the first one and it would have been completely wrong for what I needed it for. Because I was reading those descriptions, I ended up purchasing the right one and it did mean waiting a little while but I got there in the end. So sometimes, and I did find this when I was looking for that denim, that you look in the description box and the information is not available. I can't tell you how many sites didn't put the elastane content there but what you need to do when that happens, when you haven't got the information you need to purchase, contact the vendor and ask them they will more than likely be only happy to answer your query. And honestly, fabric is not cheap. We should not be buying it if it is not completely right for us. There's lots of choice out there. And if a vendor is not giving us the information we want, we can go to another vendor. Some of the things that you need to look out for. I've got my list here on my computer. I'm no Einstein. So I can't remember things off the top of my head. You want to know the width of your fabric. Fabrics tend to come in two widths. You have 115 centimeters or you have 150 centimeters. Shorter the width of the fabric, the longer the piece you will need. The wider the piece, the shorter you will need. I tend to always want the wider ones because you get more bang for your buck that way. All this stuff is in no particular order. It just, because I don't know your specific needs, do I? So I'm just banging out these nuggets of information for you and hoping that it's helpful to you. So stretch as a fabric, you need to know your stretch. If you're making a stretchy garment, then it will, the pattern will tell you exactly the stretch that you need. It will also tell you if you need any spandex, it will tell you if you need two-way or four-way stretch. So two-way and four-way stretch for beginners can be really confusing because two-way is actually one way and four-way is two-way. I know, mind blown. Basically, some garments will really require the two-way or the four-way. We'll, we'll call it by its proper name, the four-way. Some garments will really require the four-way, such as if you were making leggings because you bend over, so you need the stretch that way and that way. Also, if you're making a dolman sleeve, it tends to drape better under the arm if you have a four-way. If a pattern says that you need a certain amount of stretch, try and stick as closely to that as you can. You can go like 10% either way, but I wouldn't go much more than that. The information on patterns are there to help you. Do try and stick to them as much as you can. Unless you're so much more experienced, and then in that case, do as you please. So you need to look at the weight of the fabric. So the weight can really determine whether it's a different type of garment. So if you've got a really lightweight, like a chiffon, which would suit a blouse, you're not gonna use chiffon for a coat. So it can be the difference between an inappropriate and appropriate fabric for your needs. So do be aware, and I will put a little chart on here 
which explains the weights and whether they're medium weight, light weight, etc. Sometimes vendors will talk about how the fabric behaves, whether it's got good drape or not. You can pick some of that up from the photos as well. But if you're new, it can be helpful to understand that. Colours, you need to note that when you're buying fabric online, the colour may not be exactly the same as what you think it is because everyone's monitors show different colours. But often vendors will give you a description of the colour as well, which can be really helpful. If you're in any doubt, you need to order a swatch before you buy a big amount of fabric. The scale, the scale is so important and it's so hard often to work out what, you, what you're gonna get basically. Because if you've got a ditzy print, it can look like a big bold print if they do a close up of it. Often they'll put a really snazzy ruler or a coin or something so that you can understand how big the print is and do look out for that. If there's no clue to how big the print is, then do email them and ask them. But they might also give you a measurement, say it's a flower, they might say it's 2.5 centimetres wide or something like that. We've all done this, haven't we? We've ordered three metres of fabric and one and a half turned up and we email them go, where's the rest of my fabric? Why haven't you given me all my fabric? I paid good money for this. We sold it in half metres. You need to know this. This is... It can be so frustrating. Most sites now sell their fabrics in half meter increments. So it's worth bearing that in mind. If it says £7.50 for half a meter, you're actually paying £15 a meter, not £7.50. It's just a marketing thing. It helps them sell more fabrics. Also, is it sold as one continuous piece or is it in like fat quarters or what have you, which some quilting shop will do? shrinkage you need to know whether the type of fabric that you're purchasing shrinks often they'll give you that information but i'm going to take you way back to one of the early points i made and that is about doing your research so you can find out by researching the type of fabric you want and you can see whether it is going to shrink or not often they recommend purchasing about 10 percent more for fabrics that will shrink. I've personally never done that, but they do recommend that. So follow their advice, not mine. So the fifth tip that I want to share with you, we're talking about when the fabric arrives. So you've been doing lots of research, you've actually found the fabric that you love, you've bought it and it's arrived. The first thing you need to do is check the length. And this is something I never did in the beginning and I wish I had because when I later did it, I found I was shortchanged in some ways. Do check that length when it comes. Often vendors will give you a little bit extra to cover their own bags, but sometimes you do get less. Um, and in that case, email them and let them know because you pay for a certain amount of fabric and you should receive that fabric. As I mentioned before, you will see some color variation that's completely normal, but sometimes it is just a complete different fabric. I just published my video, how to make a tote bag. Do check that out if you haven't seen it yet. But when I purchased the fabric for that, it arrived and it was green and I ordered blue. And then I looked on the website and they had the colorway that they'd given me and they also had the colorway that I had purchased. So I just emailed them and explained that you've sent the wrong one. Could you resend the right one out? And I sent the one I got back to them. Oh, it's good in the world. So do reach out to people if it's not what you think you should have. You've bought your fabrics, you're happy with it, you've got the right length, etc, etc, etc. Put your fabrics in the washing machine. Now I need to take my own advice here. I really, really do. Because this this has never been washed. These have never been washed. They've got to go in the washing machine, especially the linen, because that shrinks. This won't go in the wash, actually, because this is going to be a coat, and I won't put the coat in the washing machine. I will dry clean it. So if you're happy with your fabrics and you've done everything you need to do, it's perfect as it is, you want to sew with it, put it in the washing machine, 
at a temperature that you will wash your garment at afterwards. This will ensure if it's going to shrink, it'll shrink now before you cut into it. So it won't affect you once you've sewn it up. I know you will cry, you'll cry if you make a garment up and it shrinks and doesn't fit you. You will cry. I know you will. So wash it beforehand. Ignore the fact that I don't wash anything. It, you know, do it because my garments would last so much longer. Did you see my de-stash video where I got rid of pretty much all the garments that I own because they were such poor quality? I'm sure some of it is because I don't pre-wash. If you pre-wash, your fabric will know what it's doing a bit better. This video is going to be long, but the information is there, so don't click off yet. I look at my analytics. I oh, know you guys click off. Not my core audience, you're great. But I know some of you do click off. Stay with me because there's more information to come. Whatever you do, do not machine dry your fabrics. That is the quickest way to ruin your garment. Let it air dry. And that can be really difficult at this time of year. But believe me, I don't even own a dryer. So I'm not guilty of this one. This is one I can safely say I'm not guilty of. I can't afford to run a dryer basically, they're so expensive. But if you do have a dryer, don't use it on your handmade garments. You will ruin them, ruin them I tell you. So once you've washed your fabrics and you've dried them, press them and put them away. It might be helpful to put a note with them to say what they are, how much there is, etc. So that when you're choosing fabrics or when you're shopping your stash, as they like to say, then you know what you've got and whether it's enough. So the next point I want to make is where should you shop? Do you have a limited budget or do you want to really put your money into your fabric? That will determine where you shop. In the UK, there's lots of lovely boutique shops that I know you don't get in America, but then there's lots of great big shops in America that we don't get here. Facebook has a number of fabric shops, like independently run fabric shops, that often will give you really cheap fabrics at affordable prices. So it's worth looking there. In the UK, Tilly Bees, I used to shop at them. They're cheap and cheerful fabrics. This fabric actually was from Tilly B and it was a real gem, paid two pound a meter for this. And actually, I think it probably should have been 15 pound a meter. It's such a lovely fabric. Other shops I like to shop at, Ditto Fabrics, absolutely love that shop. I've bought fabrics five or six times, not a single time have I had a dud fabric. Amazing quality, my Sienna jacket, which I still wear to this day that I made about a year and a half ago. As good as the day I've made it. It's a fantastic fabric. And these two linens at the bottom here, they are from Ditto. Stitchy Bee Fabrics. Now, um, Cheryl has her own YouTube channel, so I'm sure you're all subscribed to her. But if not, go search for Stitchy Bee because she's around. I've ordered from her a couple of times now really great service she's a lovely 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 woman and she gives a great service and the fabrics are really amazing and that's the great thing about going with smaller independent companies is they tend to hand pick the fabrics themselves and come up with some real gems i know so is faction does as well although i haven't purchased from her yet she is on my radar to get some fabrics from next time i need some Fabric Godmother is one that I go to if I've looked everywhere else for what I want and I can't find it, I can probably find it on Fabric Godmother. So I should probably go there first, shouldn't I? So that's in the UK, unfortunately. In the US, I've heard of Mood, Blackbird Fabrics. I think Mimi G has just opened a fabric shop as well. Uh, the Fabric Store, I think. Or is that Australian? I don't know. If you follow any of the American vloggers, they will be able to tell you better the fabric stores in America. But there are a few of them. I would love to go to Mood. I really, really would. So that's all I've got for you people. I hope you found this video useful and helpful. I hope you like the new setting. 
So leave us a comment down below. Let us know where you shop for fabrics online and what you like about them, because that way we can all help each other. Also, share your tips for buying fabric online. I know you've got some, and I know we can all benefit from them. Until next time, happy sewing. Bye for now.